tree or the seed planted by God cannot be uprooted by anyone. <speaking in Hebrew> Isaiah 61, verse 3b, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. The church of the living God, whose pillar of foundation is the truth. Is God's potter's house and God's moral vineyard or God's garden? As the potter's house, many lives that have been damaged or destroyed by the devil because of their sins, are being molded again into vessels fit for God's use. As a garden or moral vineyard, the trees or the seeds in the garden are chosen by Jesus and planted in that garden so that it might bring forth fruit of righteousness. So that when unbelievers around them see them, they will acknowledge them. Say, ah, these are the trees of righteousness, so they are the blaze of the Lord. This garden is framed by God. I need to make adequate preparations in that garden to make it very fatal. So that no tree or seed will get excuse, say, it will produce good fruit. And the Lord God watches over this moral garden. He protects it so that no one will hurt any tree or seed planted in it. The Lord God waters this garden moment by moment by sprinkling it with the clean water of the word of truth. Isaiah 27, verse 3. Isaiah 27, verse 3. 
I, the Lord, do keep it. I will water it every moment, lest any hurt it. I will keep it night and day. That is the moral vineyard of God, the garden of God. Now God himself, now they keep up. Now they water him by sprinkling clean water, or this water drew upon that garden. Now they keep up night and day. These trees or seeds, what would they talk so? We go plant for a garden so. Represent the people of God who are chosen by Jesus under this truth. That they may bring forth fruit. And that fruit must remain in them. So anything where they ask from God, his father, he will give to them. John 15, 16. John 15, 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. That is the trees or seeds which you have planted for this garden, I choose them. Why you choose them? Why you plan them for that garden? That they may do what? Bring forth fruit. Fruit of righteousness. So that anything we ask asking Father, He will do it for them. That's what Jesus Christ is saying here. So those who have found themselves in the church of the living God, whose foundation is the truth, which is the moral garden of God, have been chosen by Jesus to plant them in this moral vineyard. So it's a privilege to be in the moral vineyard of God. Anything where they ask God, he said, go do it, go give to them. Because I just want to plan them there. This tree of righteousness planted by the Lord are like physical trees. We farm at the plant by water, by the side of water. We say the roots go spread to rivers. And that tree, we never see from producing fruit. Now, so this tree of righteousness will be, which is a plan for a moral van here. Psalm 92. Psalm 92. Verse 13 to 14. Verse 13. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. You see, those that be planted in the house of the Lord, which is this true moral vineyard of God, shall flourish in the course of our God. That in that true church where the truth is, they shall still bring forth fruit, even up to their old age, they will bring forth fruit. And they will always prosper in whatever they do. And eventually, on the long run, now prosper into the kingdom of heaven. As long as they are not walking in the cancer or in the advice of the ungodly, as long as they are not sitting in the midst of the scornful, that is those who scorn are the truth, where they mock our sin. As long as you are not in their company, we will say they are talking, they pollute your mind. And as long as you are not standing in the way of sinners, but you are delighting yourself in the word of truth, you are medita meditating upon it night and day, you say you shall prosper. Whatever you do. 
and the end, your soul will prosper into the kingdom of heaven. Psalm 1, 1 to 3. Psalm 1, 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in, the, in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. When I read down there, these are the trees that are planted, that Jesus Christ said planted. We choose and plant in a smaller vineyard. As there's a condition, as long as you are not walking in the advice of who? Of the ungodly. You know, I know read down there. Because the ungodly will lead you astray if you walk in the advice. And as long as you're not sitting in the seat of the scornful, scorners are those who hate rebuke. They don't want to be rebuked by the word of truth. And where they go to, you see, judgment are reserved for scorners. So don't sit in the seat of the scornful. Once you are doing that, be sure, whatever you do, you shall what? Prosper. The most important prosperity is the prosperity of your soul. You can have physical prosperity, and your soul is dying away. That is no prosperity. You see, they must delight yourself in the word of truth with the year, and begin to meditate upon it night and day. No letter depart from your heart. Then you will prosper. Whatever you ask God, He will do for you. That is the promise of Jesus. To those who are chosen to plant in this moral van here. Now, these trees of righteousness, they are the herbsibas in the vineyard of the Lord. They are the builders in the vineyard of the Lord. What do I mean by that? That the God takes special delight in them. And they are the bride of Jesus, married to him. They are also crown of glory in the hand of God. They are royal diadem in the, in the hand of God. That the God, they showcase them, making them see his own divine nature in them. The beauty of God is seen in their lives. They are showcased as particles of God's divine nature before unbelievers around you. If your life is a reproach to unbelievers around you, and believe that the blessing the may go by, by your character. You are not a tree of righteousness. Isaiah 62. Isaiah 62. Two to three. Two to three. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and the royal diadem in the hand of thy God. That is what these three directions are in the vineyard of the Lord. Four B now. Isaiah sixty-two four B. But God. thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah, for the Lord delighteth in thee and thy land shall be married. Trees of righteousness can never be uprooted by the devil or any of his human agents. No matter how Satan try, no matter how his human agents try, they don't feel them. Why? Because they are deeply rooted and grounded in this truth. So no ungodly person or hollow Christian can uproot them from the lost vineyard. But there are some trees or seed even though they are chosen and planted in this moral vineyard of God, yet they stand the danger of being rooted out of the garden of God, either in the spirit or physically. 
Let's read Isaiah 5, 3 to 4. Isaiah 5, 3 to 4. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. These are the people of God, chosen by God, in this vineyard of God. God expects that it should bring forth grapes. Right, they are bringing up who grapes? They are bringing forth what? Wild what? Grapes, that they bury bad fruit. All that was necessary to make them bring forth good fruit was done in that garden. Now I go and say, job between me and you, all the things you need in this vineyard to make you bring forth good fruit, I do them. Why didn't you bring forth this good fruit? Who be saying why grapes now they bring forth? What was their judgment for bringing forth white grapes? Five now, five. V verse five. And now, go to. I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. Six. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned, nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. Somebody will go, don't take edge. It don't remove in protection. It's not saying the danger of being rooted out. Yes. Apart from saying go remove in protection, he's saying go withhold in blessings. I will also command the cloud that there ain't no rain upon it. That's we do we told him blessings. Spiritual blessing, financial blessing. Blessings of good death. Material blessings. Blessing in the area of life. Until you repent and begin to produce the food where I expect me to produce. Then become easy praise in the hands of enemies. They now become easy prey to Satan to pluck them out. They now become easy prey for demons to manipulate their lives and make you desolate. Then another group of tree, that the tree where they produce wild waiting grapes. Luke 13, 6 to 9. Luke 13, verse 6 to 9. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. This fig tree was to be cut down because it never brought forth any fruit. But the dresser upon the plead with the owner of that vineyard that he should be given some time. If I venture, it might repent. I mean to bring forth fruit. If you not going to bring forth fruit, he said, landlord, if you cut and down. Jesus will plant his own chosen people in this modern vineyard. Does not want any of his people who choose unto this truth to be spiritually barren. Does not delight in that. Because if they, get, if they become spiritually barren, they will be rooted out by the devil. So it's always pleading, interceding before God. Father, leave them a bit. Give them some time. 
Let's see if they are they will repent and begin to bring forth fruit. Now, if these trees that are planted in the refuse to bring forth the fruit of righteousness that is expected of them, they are still continuing rebellion or stubbornness to the daughter of God, then you will have no option than to cut it down. Because no one can continue in sin of rebellion and stubbornness and expect the forgiveness, the mercy, the favor of God to abound in one's life. No. Ezekiel 15. Ezekiel 15. 1 to 7. 1 to 7. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is the vine tree? more than any tree or than a branch which is among the trees of the forest shall wood be taken thereof to do any work or will men take a pin of it to hang any vessel thereon behold it is cast into the fire for fuel the fire devoureth both the ends of it and the midst of it is burnt is it meat for any work Behold, when it was whole, it was meat for no work. How much less shall it be meat yet for any work? When the fire had devoured it, and it is burnt, therefore thus said the Lord God, as the vine tree among the trees of the forest, which I have given to the fire for fuel, so will I give the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will set my face against them. They shall go out from one fire, and another fire shall devour them. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I set my face against them. There are a few people chosen unto this truth. Yea, they are neither useful to God or to man. To worsen their condition, they are living a life of rebellion and stubbornness to this truth, which made them to come under the fire of the anger of God. They are refused to repent or to receive correction. Even when they are being punished, they have made their faith to be as hard as a rock. These are the vines. We be say, they are of no use. They are not useful to God, not useful to man. Go can say, when they were whole, when I never put my anger upon them, they were not useful. Is it now where they are under the fire of my anger, now they will be of use to me or to man? No. Jeremiah 5, 3. Jeremiah 5, verse 3. 5, verse 3. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. They have refused to return to walk in the truth that they have been given. In this lost vineyard, that's why they are under the fire of the anger of God. And they can't say, as they come out from one fire of anger, in go be sure they enter another fire of his anger. Until they are the fact that he is the Lord God Almighty, that needs to be feared. He said they would go from one fire to another, one fire to another. Which tree are you in the vineyard of the Lord? Let us examine ourselves. My prayer is that all of us will become trees of righteousness. Judges 9. Judges 9. 8 to 13. 8 to 13. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor God and man and go to be promoted over the trees? And the trees said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit 
and go to be promoted over the trees. Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my, my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? All the trees in the forest gather together. They look for who go rule over their, their fears. They go meet uh, the only tree. Only tree say, not me and you. I'm very useful in this forest where God plant me. So. Useful to go and to man. I can't leave this, my divine assignment. Can't they go rule over the affairs of other trees? God forbid. Fig trees say, I know if you forsake my sweetness and the good fruit where they bring forth and be promoted over the other trees to rule over their affairs. No. The vine is very useful to God and to man. He says, You live in my wine, we share God and man. I go to promote over the trees. So, these trees concentrated their lives and their service to go unto man. Hence, they rejected the offer of rule over the affairs of the other tree in the forest. Therefore, these trees of righteousness who have been chosen to bring forth fruit in the vineyard must know that they are soldiers who are in the battlefield, always at war with Satan and his army. Therefore, they should not entangle themselves in the social affairs of this life. If they must remain planted in this vineyard of God. What do I mean by social affairs of this life? You know some they may be ordained in the church. You see, they are chairman of a union. Hey, that's so, so, so. Now be chairman of a landlord association for that street. But these streets were very wise enough that cannot abandon the fruit where they bear to go and rule over the affairs of other trees. If they do that, by and by, they will be rooted out in the spirit by the devil. Though they may be physically present in this moral vineyard, they will officiate to inside church. But in the spirit, they will be rooted out from the presence of God. When God came to the Garden of Eden, where he planted Adam, where he asked Adam, where are thou? He no see Adam for inside garden there. He did there. But he knows Adam in the spirit. He don't come up for his presence. Some of us will come to church. In the spirit, Satan don't root out out. But we're not getting traced in the things of this truth anymore. Mark 11, 13 to 14. Mark 11, 13 to 14. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came. If haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Yes. Now read 20 to 21. 20 to 21. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. This fig tree can be likened to the hypocrites in the true house of God, God's moral vineyard, who outwardly appear to be righteous unto man. But inwardly, they are full of hypocrisy and stubbornness, which is as a sin of iniquity. Matthew 23, 28. Matthew 23, 28. Matthew 23, 28. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within 
you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. They will buy and buy with that with spirituality. And by by we will root it out of God's moral vineyard by the devil using his human agents. If no repentance. Matthew 25, 41. Matthew 25, 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Now let's read Jeremiah 2. For Jeremiah 2, verse 4. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. 19 now. 19. Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backslidings shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter, that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee, said the Lord God of hosts. Now, read 20 to 21. 20 to 21. For of all time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands, and thou sayest, I will not transgress, when upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest, playing the harlot. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, holy, a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? Trees of righteousness that are planted by God in the moral vine of God are very precious to God. They are noble, precious, peculiar, special people. Unfortunately, some have become degenerate plants or trees because they are forsaken the Lord their God. They have become strange vines or strange trees unto God. They have gone into hollow tree. Some, they are now trafficking with, trafficking with strange spirits. What do I mean by that? Some, now, immoral films, now they will watch. Obscene films. Some, they can travel with other spirits through social media network. Some, they can travel with strange spirit by listening to immoral or obscene music. They see them masturbating because of what they watch. These eyes and ears, they have sense organs of the body. Now, which do you see with your ear, with your eye, they pollute your mind. Some, they read books written by false prophets. Four pastors. And which spirit did behind that book? Now that spirit. So we must be careful what we watch with our eyes. As noble vines. As trees of righteousness. We must be careful what we give our ears to. We must be careful what books we read. Second Corinthians 11 4. Second Corinthians 11 4. 11.4. If he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, you might well bear with him. There's another gospel. There's another spirit. Be careful. So I will not go miss heaven in the long run. It's obedient to the mystery of the kingdom of heaven, and that will make you enter heaven. No. Samson was a noble plant, very precious plant unto God, on a divine assignment for God. But what became of Samson? He became a degenerate plant. Abi? He became a strange vine unto God. Why? Because he went into unholy alliance with Delilah. So going into holy alliance with people of strange spirit can make you eventually by and by become a strange vine to God. And will be rooted out in the spirit from God's moral vineyard. 
May we remain at, 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 as Beulah, as Hebziba. We will say, God, will they take interest in us? May we remain married to Jesus. In this same vine, oh God, make we know, see, Satan also they plant in your tree there, our seed. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. 24 to 29. 24 to 29. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not, didst not thou sow good seed in the field? From whence then hath, hath it tears? He said unto them, An enemy had done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tears, you root up also the wheat with them. The church is a mixed multitude, of both the tears and the wheat. 37 to 39 now. 37. Of Matthew 13. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. Read 40. 40. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. Jesus, I can't explain to him, disciples now. See, that tear will not see so. Now, the devil not plant them inside that vineyard. But Satan will go about to look for a genuine church, the true mother of our God, to plant his own there. Jeremiah 5 26. Jeremiah 5, verse 26. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that setteth snares. They set a trap. They catch men. Why should I plant them there? They look for the trees of righteousness, the wheat, to do it in, to catch them. Either by engaging in discussion or by giving them advice. We go damn their soul. Or by throwing arrow against their feet. Matthew 13 for the three. Matthew 13. For the three. 43. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. The assignment this year is to hinder the righteous from shining forth in that moral vineyard. Because they are, they are supposed to shine forth and be a real diadem, and be a kind of glory before others, before unbelievers. But this tear want to quench the light of God in that wit. The good news is that by and by, these tears, that is the children of the wicked one, will be rooted out by God himself. Matthew 15, 13. 15, 13. 13, yes. But yes, he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. That is the word of Jesus himself, who planted me and you. He said, every plant, we have no plant. For this in two more than yard, we have seen a certain plant then, shall be rooted up. My prayer is that all the trees of righteousness who are living obedient to this to whom God has planted, God will help us to remain as trees of righteousness to the end. And give us the grace to continue to obey and live obedient to every daughter of Christ. 